Hi, Luigi Tramontana here from Craft Animations. I am going to show you the Craft Helicopter. Now it's a vehicle, so I just create one of those instances here. And uh, as you see, it's too small. And uh, what is, has been created here is uh, a bone system for helicopters. So that means that we need to adjust this bone system to this helicopter character. And uh, what I do here is I use this little script that we have in the help pages here. So you can drag and drop this uh, pivot to pivot script which is quite useful. I don't know why there isn't such a method in Maya already. You just drag and drop it and say that it's a Mel script. And uh, what you do is you grab this one then you do a shift select on that one and just uh, put it to the same same position there. Now in this case it didn't actually have that big effect but uh, it's just it's a good script to have. It's a handy script to use and I need to uh, turn this one uh, 180 degrees like that and then we have the helicopter at so what you see here is this is the center of gravity so to speak for the whole rig here so this is the point this is the the point that you should put approximately at the same height in the helicopter so right here somewhere and right underneath the 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 uh, the rotor here in the same line like that and then we scale it and these uh, main bodies here they need to be uniformly scaled so that uh, they don't skew the cameras that are that are children to this camera these uh, there are three cam uh, two cameras here cockpit camera and a follow camera and the follow camera is way back here and the driver uh, the cockpit camera is obviously here and uh, these would be totally skewed otherwise if you did a non-uniform scale in this one but it's the length that is the important thing here so just uh, make it approximately the same length here like that and uh, I think that's quite all right it isn't that extremely big a difference if you do it otherwise in another way so here you see you have the pivot is exactly in the center of the rotation here so if you have put that in the center then you can grab this one and shift select and click the script here and get it right there immediately and then we can do the same for this one I guess yes and uh, we just do it like that bang okay so now they're in the same position here and uh, we could move it upwards a little bit well without this one so the blades are approximately at the same position the same with this one like that okay so usually they're a little rotated but this one isn't so that's okay and like that right so and then you would rig the missiles with missile and but that's another tutorial and this one with a firepower and you could also couple a a look at camera to this one or a look at target to to make it move together with this one and uh, by that we are done skinning, uh, adjusting the bone system to this uh, character. And now it's time for skinning. And skinning is uh, usually you don't skin it the, the usual way because it doesn't make any sense. Sometimes it can if you want it to actually be a character. But uh, right now these are rigid objects that don't affect each other. So I just make it a child of the bone, which means that the high poly will then follow this bone uh, rigidly. So I just parent it with P here, P, like that. And then I grab the rotor and shift select and press P, like that, and to that one, P. And uh, this means we are actually finished. And it's a wise thing to make it planar immediately because this helicopter is set up so that it's on the ground. So I will rotate this one so that it horizontal when it starts because that means it's hovering in the air okay and then we can go into the helicopter and choose from a preset here we have a few one few presets here and uh, 
ordinary is usually where you should start. This is for big, uh, I don't know, Chinooks and uh, those really huge helicopters because it's really slow. This could be advanced military uh, for this one, but then you have to be careful with your input because otherwise you will, I mean, you can't just hit the, the force forward immediately with your input device. But uh, I will choose the ordinary here to begin with. So let's see what that leads us, where that leads us. And uh, then I need to bind it to my input device. And I have a few choices here. I would actually like the 3DX mouse here, but uh, the uh, usual controller I have is the Logitech Dual Action. And if I double click on that one, I will get it mapped immediately here. And what we see here, we we have all the controls that we need for the helicopter. Then I can break, I can force a break so that it breaks faster. I can put on extra wind turbulence because we have an offset here on the wind turbulence anyway. So, well, right now it's zero. So we could actually increase that to, I don't know, maybe 0.1, say. See what happens then. Because this just makes it a little bit more realistic. So I can hide the low polys here, or if I have too high high poly a mesh, I could hide that one and drive with the low poly. But uh, this one looks really nice, so I will actually fly with this and the Logitech Dual Action here. And uh, if I just uh, set it on here, you will see that there is a turbulence wind here that is affecting the helicopter. And also, what you can see here is one interesting thing. It's that these rotors are, it, it is really modeled as if it was st um, steady on the ground. So you would need to make these go upwards actually for it to be realistic in flight here. But that's, that's a modeling issue. So now I'm just steering it a little bit like that in the air. And uh, getting it to rise a bit, fly forward. Yeah, where did it go? There it is. Yeah, like that. So you can really have this, uh, I mean, this looks, you, you get these fantastic results immediately here. And one thing that you can do, actually, is if you're not very used to flying, then you could go into the parameters here and you could, uh, you could actually make the right and left speed equal to the right and left yaw. So if I put this one on the same axis, redetect this one to my right thumbstick, then these two are equal now. And if I hit record now and pull my joystick to the left, the right thumbstick, then I will have a sort of immediate uh, helicopter effect here. So this, this could be really convenient. It gives quite, I, I like this way of steering the helicopter actually, it's very easy to get it get the movements right but if you want the total complexity of it then I would suggest that you 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 do it the original way and uh, as you see here also as soon as I let go of the controls the helicopter stops all by itself so it's extremely simple to to actually fly this helicopter nothing difficult at all so I recommend you to use it for all sorts of things yeah, so that's that. And uh, just as a final thing here, we can go into 3ds Max and have a look at a helicopter uh, from the driver's seat. Just to show you, you can use it as a camera tool. That's quite nice, actually. So we create a helicopter here and uh, in the middle of the city here and just jump into the cockpit view. We can also, if, it, if we want it smoother, we could actually jump into the follow cam and fly the helicopter. You don't have to render the helicopter afterwards. I need to bind it like that and fly. Like this. So then you, w you could get this really, really awesome helicopter shots here that um, gives you a totally new way of of flying through an area. I like this really much actually. So this that's just a good tip. Okay, thank you very much. Bye bye.